Hey everyone, you're very welcome back to the Justice for Aaron Brady campaign. Now as most of you are aware, at this moment in time we are running through a number of videos that are um, contradicting the assertions and the accusations against the Brady family and Aaron in relation to the intimidation of witnesses during, before and after the trial. Now what we want to look at this morning, I'm just going to take a little sidetrack from that. We're looking at a post from um, an account called Reality Check. And um, indeed there's a very good question in there, a very uh, prudent question. But there's also a statement that we totally refute. And um, we'll have a look at that now. Just bring it up here onto the screen. Why would you not identify the man who claims to have been forced into giving evidence? Uh, laughing faces. Well, the reason we haven't fully named any of these people is because they too are victims of uh, the Irish authorities and the Irish state judicial system. Uh, we can very well name this man and we could have named Christopher, we could have named Anthony, we could have named Roe fully. But all those people to some extent are victims and been put under pressure because of their own history. Nothing got to do with the Bradys. Because of their own involvement in uh, criminality, drugs, uh, ammunition, um, attacks, assaults, extradition warrants. So we could name those people. And uh, we've made a very conscious decision to bring that along uh, gently. And we would hope that those people would uh, consider what they've done and just come forward and tell the truth. We don't want to be intimidating or seen to be abusing or lambasting anyone. Now those people, close to the people we've shown, know who they are, their families and hopefully their friends. And at some stage, some of those people may very well come forward. Um, you say there, the witnesses were Irish men except the woman you tried to supervise when she was giving her evidence. This we totally refute. Now we have shown clearly, and it is documented, documented clearly in the court and stated by the prosecution on Gardaí Acona, the person who, he wasn't supervising Molly Staunton, he was assaulting Molly Staunton. So this is a cheeky attempt to try and flip over a situation where the evidence is clear and simple. Now there's also situations and a lot more um, information we could say about Molly Staunton. There is certain information about the man who attacked her and his family connection, his ties and his relations. But again, we are being respectful to that. So it's just a very brief... Um, uh, reply to Mr. Reality Check and he says there uh, the intimidation continues even after the trial. Now once again uh, we're not intimidating anyone and Mr. Reality Check, Miss Reality Check, whichever, whoever your real identity is, you're more than welcome to come and sit and look at all the information we have. We could have shown the video of the members of Garda Shia Kona um, assaulting Roe on the street and in a pub in Manhattan. And obviously we have to be careful with all these things because uh, we are fighting the state. A corrupt state, a corrupt judicial system in respect of the mother of Detective Garda Adrian Donoghue. And if you want a reality check, Mr. Reality Check, there's it there for you. Now you come back and answer that question. There is no doubt the CCTV footage, uh, Detective Joe Ryan says the radar was six foot one and in a number of his debriefs he actually says the radar is six foot two. But we've never exaggerated ever, anything. We've kept to the facts. Mary, the credit union worker, states very clearly he was a long athletic and he was tall enough. The fella that ran past her with the gun. And the CCTV footage shows clearly that the man with the shotgun is head and shoulders above the other radar. Aaron Brady is five foot seven. And there's it there in the picture that shows very clearly. 
The man who shot and murdered Detective Garda Adrian Donoghue is taller than me. Now, you go back, Mr. Reality Check, and ask whoever you're involved with. How can we answer, how can we give a rebuttal to this reality check? We thank you for your interaction. Your uh, question was very good. And as our campaign progresses, we will name all these people fully. But in the sake of, uh, for everyone involved, and we have to remember the people who are forced, who were forced, coerced, and pressured into making false statements, those people too, as much as we may dislike them, are victims of a corrupt Irish judicial system. So thank you for your interaction, Mr. Reality Check. The offer is open. Uh, come meet us. We'll go meet you if you want to look and see what, what the reality of this situation is. The reality of this situation is our son is serving 40 years in prison for a crime he had nothing to do with. Now that is a reality check. Uh, but please continue to interact because it brings these points to the fore and it gives us an opportunity uh, to respond. Thank you once again and we're going to be back this evening uh, with another reality check on who was intimidating who in relation to the trial and the investigation uh, into the murder and robbery at Lordship Credit Union. Thank you.